name is Scott Sanner. I'm a faculty member of industrial engineering, cross-pointed in computer science. I'm also a, a faculty affiliate here at the Vector Institute. Uh, I generally apply uh, AI, machine learning, information retrieval, operations research techniques to applications of interest to uh, industry. So it could be e-commerce, recommendation, uh, finance, health, etc. If the industry has data, typically I look at that sort of problem. It stems from my research in general, and so I would consider myself a computer scientist by training, but industrial engineer by trade. Uh, meaning that uh, my, the techniques in my toolbox are AI machine learning, uh, operations research, information retrieval, uh, work with interactive interfaces. Um, but the problems that I, I apply to would be recommendation, e-commerce, uh, health, finance, um, traffic signal control, uh, HVAC control. So these are, all, these are all problems that have a lot of data that require uh, intelligent control and learning techniques uh, to uh, do better than what we currently do in practice. And I think, so to answer your second question, like what is the future of smart cities? I think if you look at our existing cities, you find they're unfortunately quite dumb. They're not very smart. We sit at traffic lights. We wait 30 seconds while no traffic is moving anywhere, right? Because these, these systems really aren't aware of what's going on. They don't use the cameras to actually detect traffic, to detect queue lengths. Uh, they simply have this rule-based reactive control uh, on a fixed cycle time. Uh, same for HVAC. I'll walk into the Bain Center in the middle of summer. It's uh, chilled to uh, you know, freezer-like temperatures in the auditorium, and no one's going to be in that room all day. Uh, that's a massive waste of electricity. And again, we don't sense uh, the presence. We don't predict presence. Uh, we just have these rules that between 9 and 5, we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, air, air condition our, our buildings. So um, we need to make our cities smarter. Part of that is just collecting the right data we need to begin with. Part of that is using the techniques that we work on here at Vector Institute from machine learning, deep learning, uh, and control methods to use that data to make good decisions. And, and the final part is the human interface. Uh, things that might be good for energy are not necessarily good for human comfort. And so we have to trade off, uh, at the end of the day, uh, what should we really be controlling for uh, with these systems. But the, you know, the future of smart cities is simply making use of all this data that we currently have that we honestly just throw away. I came into my PhD wanting to do strong AI, which is wanting to make machines that were human level, uh, of human level intelligence. Uh, and I, I think, you know, in order to get my PhD, my supervisor said, Scott, you, you have to solve some problem, right? You're not going to solve strong AI in your PhD. You have to solve some problem. And so I became very applied over the years. I kind of lost that, uh, that, that strong AI uh, interest. Uh, I have to say the advent of deep learning has made me rethink uh, the fact that strong AI is not possible. Um, it's done things that I thought would not happen uh, in the next 10 years. It's done them, you know, a few years ago. Uh, so, uh, you know, it has reinvigorated my interest in strong AI, but there are still key things missing. Uh, we still train our systems uh, for one-off tasks, to do image recognition, to do speech translation, et cetera. Uh, we don't typically leverage and transfer information from one task to the other. I think if you look at human-level intelligence, if we were just an individual, individual on an island, right, uh, without uh, culture and social interaction, we, we wouldn't nearly have the knowledge that we do uh, growing up with uh, 18 to 25 years of, of formal education, um, uh, followed by all the communication that we do on a daily basis with other humans who exchange information and ideas. And I think that's what deep learning is currently missing, uh, is that is a transfer so that any learning that's done for one task is reused for, uh, for another task. Certainly people are looking at transfer learning, People are looking at lifelong learning, but I would like to see a lot more of that work. So I spent uh, nine lovely years in Australia working for a organization very much like the Vector, Vector Institute. Uh, it sort of actually looked very much the same with sort of the open space and, and, and offices. Uh, we were a mixture of faculty and, and researchers. And, uh, and what I loved about uh, this organization in Australia, which is the critical mass of both researchers, brilliant researchers, and, uh, and brilliant grad students, all working together collectively on projects. Uh, something you lose a little bit when you go into academia, and you've got a large group. I have 14 grad students right now, so five PhD and nine masters. And it, it doesn't leave a whole lot of time for the additional collaboration. Uh, but here at the Vector Institute, you have a critical mass of researchers working on deep learning and other technologies. And it's just a, 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 great, a great chance for multiple researchers uh, and local students to work together at the same time.